Hi, my name is Stacy Dillinger, and I am going to, pre to present my research on the effectiveness of MTSS with reading and the interventions used. I chose this topic because at Huguenin Primary School, we are in year four of the multi-tiered systems of support process. We started our process with um, testing using the Easy CBM. Last year, we switched to using the Ames Web System. This allows us to finally have enough consistent data from winter of last year to winter of this year and spring of last year to spring of this year. With my research, I would like to answer the questions, how effective has the MTSS reading process been within our primary school at individual grade levels, and what interventions are being used at each grade level. For my research, I used Forsyth Library from Fort Hay State University. I used Eric Digest primarily as my research. I did 10 article reviews for my literature. I ordered it using um, starting with RTI slash MTSS, and then I went on to talk about the reading continuum, beginning with phonemic awareness, phonics, then fluency. And then I ended by talking about the interventions. With RTI, I read the article, Supporting School-Based Response to Intervention, a Practitioner's Model by Hoover and Love. Hoover and Love interviewed three schools in the United States that have implemented RTI. The schools offered four key elements needed to successfully Im implement. The first element was a multi-tiered instruction. Tier 1 was the core instruction. Tier 2, supplemental. And Tier 3, intensive instruction in addition to the core instruction. They found that 90 to 95 percent of students should be successful with only Tier 1 and Tier 2 instruction. The second element needed is data-driven decision making. Data is gathered through a screener given three times a year, progress monitoring, and diagnostic assessments. The third element needed is an evidence-based practice. Evidence-based practice will include two components of instruction, comprehensive curricula and teaching interventions. The next article I read about RTI is Responsiveness to Intervention in Reading, Architecture, and Practices. Jenkins, Schiller, Blackberry, Thayer, and Tilly described how the RTI mo model worked in 62 elementary schools from various states. A majority implemented RTI in two subjects, used curriculum-based measure and some form of progress monitoring. Tier 2 and 3 interventions were provided 4 to 5 days a week with a ratio of no more than 1 teacher per 6 students in Tier 2 and a ratio of 1 teacher per 4 students in Tier 3. The schools benchmark tested their students 2 to 3 times a year using a form of CBM such as Dibbles or Ames Web. The third article I studied about RTI was predicting first grade reading performance from kindergarten response to tier one instruction. The importance of tier one intervention has been shown to be effective in grade levels as low as kindergarten. This study found that kindergarten is the first time that teachers are able to teach reading instruction and evaluate the effectiveness. The literacy block in kindergarten examined provided an evidence-based core reading program. Teaching was code-focused rather than meaning-focused throughout the literacy block. I might state here that the reason why I talk about RTI and MTSS is that it is hard to find information on just MTSS. MTSS and RTI are very much alike. Now I'm going to talk about the reading continuum beginning with phonemic awareness. I read the article Explicit Instruction in Phonemic Awareness and Phonetically Based Decoding Skills as an Intervention Strategy for Struggling Readers in Whole Language Classrooms. The research suggests that the process of learning to read is dependent upon each student. Students who possess high reading knowledge thrive when the teacher uses a whole language approach. Students who lack reading knowledge benefit more from explicit, systematic instruction in phonemic awareness and decoding skills. The study concluded that students who do not possess the essential literacy skills and the formal instruction in phonological awareness will rely on ineffective word identification strategies. Once a student has mastered phonological awareness, 
he or she is ready to begin working on their phonics skills. I read a study called Pathways to Word Reading and Decoding, the Roles of Automaticity and Accuracy. The study found that students who struggle with reading at, at the end of first grade will continue to ex experience academic challenges and discipline issues. This study found that initial nonsense word fluency and progress during first grade year predict their oral reading fluency outcomes. Growth on NWF can be used as a prediction of end of the year reading outcomes. The strategies a student uses to obtain a certain NWF score will differ from student to student. By looking at how the student decodes can help determine what reading strategies are used most, but most by students at the time. I also looked at an article that talked about an intervention with phonics. It's called the Phonographics Reading Program. This study was used with children in primary two who had one and a half years in mixed reading instruction strategy. Phonographics claims to teach children to read in an appropriate and child-friendly fashion in a much quicker manner than other programs. Two approaches to teaching phonics exist. The analytic approach begins by looking at whole word and then breaking it down. The synthetic approach emphasizes blending of graphemes. The study found that the students participating in the twice weekly pullout ses sessions using phonographics had an increase in the final score of literacy skill being measured. I'll now talk about the next step, fluency. I studied these three articles. The first article, Effects of Small Group and One-on-One -on -one Reading Fluency Interventions with Second Grade Low-Performing Spanish Readers. I found from this study that they defined reading fluency as a student's ability to read with speed, accuracy, and expression. The study conducted compared reading interventions for fluency in Spanish conducted in one-on-one -on -one settings and small group settings. It supported that either one-on-one -on -one or small group fluency work as an, as, is effective when it relates to words correct per minute, whether it's in Spanish or in English. I then read about reading comprehension by interviewing to improve their reading fluency. This study used five fourth grade students. The students were already at risk of not meeting the goals of fluency and reading comprehension based on their fall assessment. They were given another assessment to determine the type of intervention needed to improve their fluency. As a result, they were given two 30-minute sessions using repeated practice on instructional level reading material. The instructor only provided feedback and error correction during the session. She also progress monitored weekly. According to the study, all five students increased their words correct per minute with the addition of feedback and practice intervention. Schollen and Burns examined the relationship between pre-intervention measures, post-intervention measures, and the growth of reading fluency scores. The data suggested that no measure exists that adequately relates to growth. And if teachers are triaging students solely based on baseline data, they should be doing so with caution. An interesting finding through this study is that accuracy is a predictor of fluency, but not for all growth of a reader. If the instructional level is used, it leads to time on task, comprehension, and growth. Many kinds of interventions can be used, whether it's a canned intervention, slowly just reading a text, or using um, technology. In a breakthrough for Josh, how use of an iPad facilitated reading improvement, a teacher used an iPad as her reading intervention strategy. The results of the article were based solely on one teacher and one student, but they found that six months after tutoring, the student was still reading below grade level, although he had shown progress after the intervention. For my data collection, I chose to use Ames Web. Um, the on, um, we do our online screener um, to find the effectiveness of MTSS. I look at the Ames Web Rainbow Report. I'll use that data to sort my students into a MTSS um, quadrant sort.
According to the MTSS Building Leadership Team Implementation Guide for Reading, the students can be sorted into four quadrants. The first one, accurate and fluent. The second one, accurate and not fluent. The third one, not accurate and not fluent. And the fourth one, not accurate and fluent. The students' colors from the Rainbow Report will be transferred to the MTSS Quadrant Sort. As for the rest of my data collection, I will be interviewing each of the teachers that perform an intervention for MTSS. I will use a laptop to keep track of everything we talk about as we go through these interviews. Using the MTSS quadrant sort from the respective testing sessions, I will find the percentage of students in each quadrant. The same quadrant sort will be used to find the percentage of Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3 students. I will use a chart to display those findings. The information from the interview will be analyzed, sorted by the skill the intervention was provided, and grouped into a skills category with an intervention lesson listed. I hope to find an increase in reading scores from the winter of last year to the winter of this year on the phoneme segmentation fluency. I also hope to find an increase of scores from last year's first grade um, RCBM to this year's second grade RCBM in the spring. From the teacher interviews, I hope to find some new interventions to share with everyone in our primary school. From this study, I believe the limitations will be the fact that not everyone is on board with MTSS. Each teacher does testing in the same manner, but I also think that our intervention time is a limitation because it's not always provided in a universal manner, such as the time that's provided for those interventions and using the time wisely. In conclusion, the research stated in this slideshow supports the importance of MTSS or RTI. It also supports the reading continuum. It shows that those are stair steps to be built on each other from phonemic awareness to phonics and to fluency. It's also very important to find new intervention strategies because we want to keep those interventions exciting for both the teacher and the student. From here, I want to be able to compare the scores vertically past second grade. Our third through sixth grade um, intermediate school will begin the MTSS process next year and we are hoping that they will also adopt Ames Web as their universal screener. This will allow us to go ahead and compare the data from second grade on to third grade and so forth over each year. From that, again, we hope to find that reading will increase the fluency part of it as students get older. Thank you for allowing me to speak to you today. Here are my references that I used.